Welcome to our review on the prevention and treatment of disease. So what we're going to do in this video is we're going to have a look at a few key ways that we can either prevent or treat diseases. And one thing you're going to notice is that all of the names are pretty similar and therefore quite easy to mix up. So make sure that you do learn the proper name and what it actually stands for. It's one of these keywords and their meanings moments. So the first one we're going to look at are the antiseptics. Now, antiseptics are used on any external living surface, so the sort of surface of your skin, for example, to kill or neutralize all types of pathogen. The big advantage they've got is they don't harm human tissue so that when we're applying the antiseptic to the skin, it's not going to actually damage the skin. So two key examples here are alcohol and iodine. So if you've ever seen anyone in those sort of medical shows where they squirt the iodine, that kind of orangey liquid all over someone before cutting into them, the whole idea of that is to kill any of those pathogens on the surface before we make an incision through that physical barrier. Depending on which antiseptic we've got, that's going to determine what microorganisms are affected because they act differently on different microorganisms. Another phrase you might see thrown around here is the word disinfectant. So they do the same thing. They're still going to kill pathogens on a surface, but this time it's on non-living surfaces. So you might disinfect your kitchen side, but you don't disinfect your skin. So disinfectants kill pathogens on non-living surfaces. Antiseptics kill pathogens on living surfaces like skin. The second type of chemical we're going to look at are the antivirals. Now, antivirals will destroy viruses, hence the name antiviral. Now, many of these are actually specific and designed to act on one type of virus. And the way that they will actually kill that virus is potentially by blocking the virus from entering the host cell, because as we've already looked at, if a virus can't get into the host cell, it can't replicate. It could prevent the virus from releasing its genetic material, and again, that prevents it from being able to replicate. Or it could prevent the virus from inserting its genetic material into the host DNA, so it stops it taking over that host cell machinery to replicate once more. It's all about stopping the virus from repli replicating inside the body, but the method by which it does it could be different. The last kind of drug we're going to look at are the antibiotics. So antibiotics are drugs that will kill bacteria without damaging your cells. So we've got a few different types of antibiotic which we can use and each type will kill a different range of bacteria. So what we actually find is that if you've got a particular infection that's not clearing up on its own, then the doctor may well take blood or stool samples from you. Those get sent off to a lab, they grow a culture on an agar plate and then we can use antibiotic discs to identify which drug would work best. So this isn't the first step. So when you go into the doctors, don't be expecting to take blood and stool samples to give you a very specific antibiotic. They're going to use ones that they know are most likely to work with your particular condition. If, however, you have something that doesn't respond to their usual range of antibiotics, they will go through this process of identifying what antibiotic will work because that means they can then prescribe the right drug to take care of the problem. The way in which the lab will be able to identify which antibiotic is best at killing a particular bacterial cell is by identifying the largest zone of inhibition. When we talk about a zone of inhibition, it's basically a region where bacterial growth is prevented, which occurs around the disc of the antibiotic. So in the middle at the bottom, you've got an agar plate that's got a complete covering of the bacteria, which is the kind of misty look. The little white discs are different antibiotics soaked into a bit of paper. And then you can see that around them, they've got that clear circle. That's the zone of inhibition. What we find is the larger the zone of inhibition, then the greater the effect of killing bacteria that antibiotic actually has. So the one with the largest zone of inhibition is the one that's best at killing that bacteria. Do remember a couple of bits from your maths here. If they ask you to calculate the area of a circle, then it's pi times the radius squared. So remember, radius is half diameter of the circle. 
So make sure you do know that because they're not going to give it to you on the actual exam paper. That's expected knowledge from your math studies as well. Hopefully at the end of this video, you can now describe the action of antiseptics, antivirals and antibiotics. You can define what's meant by the term zone of inhibition. And you can also calculate the area of the zone of inhibition and explain what that means in terms of the effectiveness of an antibiotic.